Hello, how's it going? Today we're going to look at another uh, one of the totalizator board display thingamagoops. Uh, this is a bit of a lone ranger in the pile. This is a smaller version than the one from uh, last time. There's, uh, there's four of the larger ones and this is uh, yeah, a smaller lone ranger. It's on its own. So this was stored by Lucian Noon since uh, possibly 2010. Uh, Paul LPBK is a YouTube channel uh, talking about uh, telephone exchange stuff. Well, um, he sent me an email that was sent in 2010 uh, to the telecommunications heritage uh, group um, uh, about uh, the idea of this being tried, somebody trying to find somebody to take over the totalizator. It doesn't strike me as actually being fully complete from this from this mention, but there are, like I mentioned, other parts of the totalizator, uh, the actual computer aspect of it that I'm yet to go and get. I don't know when I'm going to be going and getting it. I have, the, you know, these are the only blitz and bobs that I've got so far, and it's been a while. We'll see. We'll see. We'll wait and we'll wait and see. But it's from the Perry Bar Greyhound Stadium in Birmingham. Um, it's a complete set with ticket machine. That box there, I'm assuming. Um, uh, wiper selectors, uh, that possibly is those over there, or it possibly is another box that will still yet to pick up. Um, aggregators, which are a delight to see. I think those aggregators, maybe those are the displays. All gear, wheels and electromagnetic latches, flaps, control relay sets, circuit diagrams, etc., etc. Anyone who has an interest in electromechanical stuff will love this. Well, I think, we think that this might be the totalizator. And Lucian picked up and yeah, hopefully it's all still where it's supposed to be. So when we get it, we could possibly wire it all together in some sort of realm or to talk to the displays. Uh, this, remember this email was from 2010. Uh, I have contacted four museums who have declined to take it because of either lack of space or interest. Oh, bloomin' heck. Currently stored in Gloucestershire. That was Mick, the THG surplus equipment coordinator from back then in 2010. Uh, he's sadly no longer with us, so we can't ask him any more questions. Uh, but if anybody knows more and let's try and track down more of this information, then please do. Uh, Paul also tried to find some pictures of it. Also, it looks like there were two dog tracks in Perry Bar between the 1920s and the 1980s. It is unclear which one this email related to. The email he was speaking about which we are surmising might be what these things are from and also the rest of the totalizator equipment which I haven't yet picked up. So we'll keep on trying to fill the information in so hopefully by the time we get the rest of the totalizator equipment then we now have a bit more of an understanding of what the fudge is going on but in the meantime let's have a look at this. So like I said this one is much smaller and it's a slightly different design. Um, I have actually removed the motor from it. Um, the motors I can't remember where it is we're gonna have to bolt it back in a second but if I move the uh, display around I, it has to be viewed a little bit differently or it's a a bit hard to see what's actually going on then if I twist it around you'll see there's one there's two oh there's three oh gosh it's really hard to see what's going on um it's a bit hard to see it's, it needs a bit of adjustment yeah that is free that is free oh there's there's four there's five there's six. Ooh, six. Yeah, that's not meant to move. There's seven. Eight. These are all a little bit, need a little bit of adjustment. Just slightly. And whenever you touch them, they go out of adjustment as well. There's nine. And there's zero and we're going to go back to nothing. As you can see, if you view it from the top, well, you're not going to have much luck trying to figure out what is going on. But the idea is, is this is on a board quite high up, so you're viewing it from sort of from an angle of that. So it's not really an issue. Uh, so it is different to the larger ones because the larger ones literally flip backwards. These ones just flip up. So if you are a giant that is taller than the board, then you're not going to have much luck deciphering what it's actually trying to say. Well, um, the issue was that the the motor wasn't working to start with. Um, I have dismantled it and I found that one of the springs, one of the brushes, which are here, if we try and remove one, one of the brushes was being a bit iffy. It was getting a bit sticky and wasn't pulling in further, but uh, with a bit of a clean uh, and a bit of a shine, then that was it. In fact, that's, a, that's the other one. So 
There's the brush from it. Plop that back in, push it right on down. Well, now this motor actually works if we put the uh, 24 volts through it. So grab this, plop this on her. You can see that, can't you? Right. It's actually quite a nice motor. So we're going to put this back together really quickly and then we're going to figure out everything else. So there was, um, there was a mount, there was something that sat on top of it that latched down these two wires. Right, so that mount sits on there and then this goes, actually, not yet. We're going to have to put the cover onto the back of the motor for the, which covers up the springs. Uh, the, the brushes, sorry. So, um, just shove that in here. Oh, does that go around the other way? It goes around the other way. Only one screw because there was only one screw here. I have a feeling something that's bit since this has been non running, it's been, it's been fiddled with, but one of the screws, uh, because of difficulty to access it, uh, was missing. But Gosh knows when that was, but who knows? Right, so there we go. We got the motor back together. Let's just double check it wasn't any of that stuff that was causing it to short or something. So just plop this. Right, still working. That's good. So we might actually be able to see it doing its thing. So this goes, this motor goes over here. I don't know where the wires for the motor go yet. In fact, it looks like it's been, there's a couple of snipped wires, black and red. I will assume that these actually connected to the motor, but somebody's wanting to see what was going on at some point, like us right now in this video. So um, I'm gonna put this back together. So we're gonna bolt it back onto the cog, get it back on the gear. And um, we'll see it running in all of its glory. Right, okay, so with any luck, we might, I'm gonna slant it upwards so it's like we're looking up at the board, the Greyhound board, just seeing what's going on. And um, yeah, all of the bottoms are uh, actually, you know, they're black, so they're different, decisive. So let's see what it would have looked like when it was running. Uh, so as you see, some of these don't really want to work as well as they should. Um, the fact is, and this we'll, we'll have a look at the mechanism in a sec when I get it over to a number. Oh dear. Okay, so we got it at one. It takes a little bit more fidgeting because the actual adjustments of these are all down to the cams that are around the back. So this is the first side that you see. This is the um, this is the cam. And as you can see, there's um. All of the all of the shapes of the that, that make the uh, levers move in when that number's called up. So um, let's just turn it on really quickly. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You can see the cam moving from this side. We'll do a whole rotation. And then around the other side, you'll see right inside if you look closely at this bit this chunk right here because you'll struggle to see the um, the rest of the cams that are above the motor it was also handy to have the motor out so we could uh, clean and make sure they were all free and loose which took a little bit of a moment for me right oh no i've got to keep it out So as you can see, they're literally just um, bent metal rods that are, you know, fine-tuned by slightly bending them more, so they're all in line. It's a little bit of a finickety job, but um, it's just a, it's just a different, different design of, um, of display. It's pretty cool. Nope.
these ones don't want to go as down as far. So we're going to get to seven and we're going to try and adjust them a little bit or one of them that needs it. Let's get to it. One doesn't need it. Who doesn't need it? Three. Oh, I went past it. We can go back just a little bit. Right, so these need adjusting slightly. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Right, like that. This should be better. Amazingly enough, I've just noticed both of these, these two top ones are actually on the same, the same cam because they must only be used at the same time. So it's this, this top cam. So when that gets pushed up, they get sent up. That's a little bit better. So that would explain why both of them are not working the best they are, they can be. But you still get an idea of the numbers. This is another thing. There's two here that are not used because none of the numbers actually require these two pins. It's the same on the big ones. There's just, there's just nothing there. It's, it's just pretty good. And yeah, that's really cool that both of these actually connect to the same cam. Uh, the idea with this one is it's going to be wired in as a demonstration at the museum. The next video on this will be showing uh, how we're going to, I'm going to do this. Um, the idea is going to be, it's going to know where it is because it has this on top of it. This shows it where it actually is in its motion, like a servo or something. There we go. So as you can see, it spins around. This is a number. This is a blank space. So when we get to, let's get to two. I keep on jumping past them. This is two, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, this is the common connector. There's two sets of wipers that connect to two rows of these switches. So it's just like a uniselector assembly. This obviously tells whatever it's connected to via this, which is the same connector as in the other displays, which has got a lot in common with the connectors in telecommunications. No, I'm not going to do that right now. So hopefully we're going to find the connectors that this connect to. Hopefully that's directly to the, um, the, the, the selectors from the totalizator computer, which is hopefully in the boxes that are still being stored for the totalizator board. We'll, we'll, we shall see. But you never know, there might be more of these. We just don't know yet. We've got to go and have a look. But when that is, I do not know. But for now, let's just appreciate this display for what it is. Come on. How cool is that? So yeah, we're gonna have a think about how to use this one because the other ones are matching. We're gonna wire those actually in the totalizator. This one, possibly not so because it's just a Lone Ranger right now. So maybe it might be 10 buttons. You push it, it will find itself and go over to there thanks to the path selector down here. But that'll be in the next video, so comment below what you think this single digit should be if we don't find any more and this one becomes a display display in the display display. Anyway, that's it. Have a lovely time.